Could you say something about this animation? Sure. This is, in fact, a kind of burning glass. It does the same thing as a parabolic disk, but it does it in two steps. What we see here is a planar wavefront being reflected by two parabolic cylinders, turned first into a cylinder and then into a sphere. And that sphere converges to a point. Wavefront is moving back and forth. And then we're turning it around. Here, let's look at it in a wireframe mode. You can see more clearly, here's the cylinder. We stop it here. See the parabolic cylinder here. And then by moving up, the cylinder turns into a sphere. Here is the spherical wavefront. Right here. And that spherical wavefront converges to a point. Here is the so this will, in fact, focus all the energy that hits the first surface here, provided that energy is contained in a plane wavefront, and focus it in this small area over here. If you look at the wall here, you can see a picture of this contraption in practice. This is a big burning glass. The man here is igniting a piece of wood. But in fact, we have melted stone with this burning glass and created temperatures up to 2,500 degrees centigrade in this focal point over here. Okay. Here is a bigger mirror which is about 3 times 2 meters, 6 square meters, representing about a 4 horsepower of efficiency. So this is what could be called a solar horsepower engine with 1 horsepower in front and minus 4 horsepower in, in the back. Very neat. This construction has two main advantages compared to an ordinary parabolic disk. First, it's created out of planar surfaces that you can bend, and therefore it's easy to build in large sizes. And second, you can actually put the focal points over here in this area, outside of the mirrors, where it doesn't block off the incoming energy, comes in from here, and therefore it's freely available to do work. This is useful if you want to create a steam engine or a melting furnace or any kind of working device. But this construction has a lot of practical applicability.